Buenos dias, class. Welcome to another day of learning. Hope everybody's doing great today. Good to see everybody's face. I'm happy everybody's here again today. Uh, as we continue our lesson, our math lesson this week, we're really gonna focus on the powers of 10 and our place value system is based on um, the power of 10. So it's important that we all understand how to do this. And for my students here that um, are native English speakers, I have a great tool to help us today. Um, it's gonna be really useful and we've used these once before and I think they work really well. So let's go ahead and do them again today. I'm gonna to have everybody, if you see, if you uh, look into your desk, you'll see that you have a brand new set of base 10 blocks. So I want you to pull your base 10 blocks out please right now and put them on your table, but don't play with them yet. I know they're tempting to play with because it's basically like playing with, you know, Legos when you're a little kid, but now we have to act a little bit more mature and keep your hands off those please just for the time being and the reason i like you guys using these base 10 blocks is because they really provide a hands-on way for you guys to learn and place value and understand number concepts and operations as well as measurement um, they're really versatile like that and um, they also help you guys because they physically represent what you're learning so you can have a deeper development of the understanding of which the cup of the concept so for my english learners um, <clears throat> this is really helpful for you to help kind of kind of tie the concept of numbers to actual physical object that you can hold and then you can actually look at that to figure out your, your, your answers. So um, this is a really great tool and I'm glad we're using it today. Um, these are grateful, you know, not just in, in elementary school, but in middle school and high school and even adults, they use them for training and stuff like that. So um, we're really going to get good use out of them. So. Um, you know, the great thing about them is the base 10 blocks, they have a cube that represents one. They have a strip that represents a 10 cube strip. And then there's a 100 cube block to represent 100. So we'll be counting in ones, tens, and 100s. And for this operation today, we don't have to concern ourselves about the one blocks. We'll be using the tens, uh, the 10 strip block and the 100 block. All right. So, um, these are great uh, for um, hands-on support for my EL, my EL students as well. They can connect your words, uh, such as ones, tens, and thousands, hundreds. These new terms that you're learning about currency and money and math and place values. Um, you're gonna have to learn this stuff and it's important that you know this. So that's why these are great because you can literally connect them by using um, you know, a physical object that represents 10, physical object represents 100, another physical object represents, uh, you know, stack them up, it could be a thousand, you know, depending on how you do it. So this is great. Um, and this is also helpful because we're studying decimals right now and you can use one flat to represent a whole unit and establish the value from the other pieces there. So, you know, we could use a 10 strip and then we could use a decimal and then use another couple of cubes to represent what comes after that decibel as well. So uh, we will get into that a little bit later on. Um, today's lesson is going to be a little bit more uh, just kind of um, focusing on the powers of 10, like I said, and this is a very um, fun lesson. And it's, um, <clears throat> it's really, I thought about this the other night because um, I was like really craving something sweet. And, you know, my wife's saying, no, oh, I don't want anything, you know this and that, so I just want some food. So we went and got some food and went to this really good restaurant and they had this lady there was making these homemade churros. And um, I was like, I'm definitely gonna churro. So I uh, ate a churro, I ate two churros actually, and they were delicious, fresh baked, oh, muy, muy bueno. Um, but uh, now I'm, I'm bringing you guys this this problem because it made me think about a, you know, a problem that, um, we can use with the powers of 10 and why not surround it by a delicious treat like a churro. So <clears throat> this is called the churro problem. All right. So um, here we have our little situation is um, Irma drives a forklift. Okay. Irma drives a forklift at the Panaderia. All right. And when she works at the Panaderia, she, one of her jobs is to make sure that the truck she's loading doesn't go overweight. And to do this, she sometimes has to get down to the actual decimal and know how much she's actually loading up to a very precise number. So um, to do this, we're gonna help Irma by using the powers of 10 and using our, our uh, base 10 blocks. And together we're gonna figure this question out, okay? So again, we're only using tens here, but um, 
Okay, we're gonna go further right now, okay? So follow me along the board as I talk about it, please. And everybody, please eyes on me. All right, thank you very much. Okay, perfect, all right, now we get everybody's attention. Let's get some sweet math done here. All right, so the Truro problem here. Um, so she's loading up her truck, okay? Irma's loading up the truck. She's got a lot of stuff to do. And there's 10 pallets she has to load, okay? So she's got a total of 10 pallets she's got to load up. And each one of those pallets has 10 cartons. There's 10 cartons on each pallet, okay? And then in each one of these cartons, there's 10 boxes in each one of the cartons, okay? So you got 10 pallets, you got 10 cartons on each pallet, and each one has 10 boxes in each carton, okay? And then it, there are 10 churros in each box. All right, so everybody's got their head wrapped around that. All right, everybody's following along. Okay, so we got the 10 pallets, right? We have 10 cartons in each pallet. So picture a, picture a pallet, you know, a big wooden um, board and picture 10 cartons. Now, I just want you to picture one pallet right now, okay? On uh, one pallet, okay? One, you know, it's about three by three. You've got 10 cartons, okay? On these 10 cartons, uh, on these 10 cartons, okay, picture 10, visualize 10 cartons. You could either just be all laid out on the on one flat, flat pallet, okay? You got the 10 cartons. And then in each one, you have 10 boxes in each cart, okay? So each one of those boxes you're pitching on the pallet, inside that, there's 10 more boxes, all right? And then when you open one of those boxes, oh, sweet, I scored. What do I have here? Is this turtles? open up and there's 10 churros now in each one of those boxes all right so that's a pretty good uh pretty good find right there if you came up on a box of that it fell off the truck or something but we won't talk about that um so so we have the 10 pallets 10 cartons on each pallet 10 boxes in each carton 10 churros in each box oh a lot of 10s here okay remember irma drives a forklift at the panaderia all right She's driving the forklift. She's responsible for making safety, make sure it's safe, all right? So let's work this out together, all right? Everybody, get your base 10 blocks out, okay? I want you to have one base 10 block right now to represent the 10 pallets. All right, thank you. All right, everybody show me a 10 strip. Perfect, okay, great. So we have 10 pallets, all right? That's it, 10 pallets total, all right? And then, this is my little palette, by the way. This is my, my artwork, so don't make fun of me. I wasn't an art major. If I was, I'd probably be doing art, but I'm not. I'm doing math instead. So today, my art skills persist of this. This is my palette, all right? I know it looks like kind of like a, a blanket or something you see at the beach, but that's a palette, okay? Those are little wood strips that go, this is all wood right here, right? Then we have 10 palettes, okay? And then we have how many pallets in, or how many um, cards in each pallet? 10, right? Exactly, 10. Diaz, Diaz, right? Okay, so we have Diaz, Diaz cartons in each pallet, all right? So then, what do we have when we multiply 10 times 10? Does everybody know 10 times 10? Everybody should know this one, easy. Right, everybody want together? One, two, three, 100, yes, 100. So let's use a different color to represent that. I'll use green again. So we have 100, all right. Oh, make that more of a circle. All right, now we have, I'm just gonna put parentheses, this P represents palette and the C represents cartons, okay? Now we get to our boxes. Remember we have 10 pallets. Each pallet has 10 cartons, right? And then each cart, inside each carton, basically, there's, there's, inside each carton, you're gonna have, um, sorry, there's 10 boxes in each carton, so, then you have the box right here, so then you have 10 times 10 cartons times 10 boxes, all right? This is my box, it says box on it, no, no, pretty, pretty out there, pretty, pretty uh, easy to figure out, right? So that's B, so what happens when we multiply 10 times 10 times 10? So we already know when we multiply 10, times 10, we get 100. So basically think about this, what happens when we multiply 10 times 100? What happens when we multiply 10 times 100? What's 
10 one hundreds to you. If somebody gave you 10 one hundreds, well, how much money would you have? A thousand, right? A thousand dollars. A thousand, sorry. You'd have a thousand all together. They give you 10, 10 one hundred dollar bills, you'd have a thousand dollars. Same with this. 10 times a hundred equals a thousand. Whoa, okay. That's a whole lot of boxes, right? So now we got to figure out how many churros are all total. And remember, there's 10 churros in each box. So now we know we have, basically, we'll just go down the line here. We'll do 10 pallets times 10 cartons times 10 boxes times 10. And I put CH here for churros to dis distinguish it from the cartons times 10 cartons. So then we can look at this and we can do one or two things. We can multiply all the way across. Let me know 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 is 1,000 times 10 more. So what happens when you have 10 $1,000 bills given to you? How much do you have then? One, two, three, everybody together? Correct, 10,000, right? So, oops. So we have, so Irma, doing her math and being such a good math student, Irma's figured out that she has 10,000 churros to load up. She has 10,000 churros total that she's gonna load up in the bakery truck to get delivered, and everybody's gonna be so happy when they get them. I know I will be, because I love churros. Now, Irma, she's got a great job. She drives a forklift, and she drives a forklift at a panaderia, which is a bakery, and who knows all the good stuff she gets, but if you ask me, she's winning. All right, so, that's that, right? Everybody get your base 10 blocks, okay? So you have your basement tax of your 100, okay? Then you have your 100 base 10 blocks. That's one flat, all right? Your flat measures 100. Now stack 10 flats on top of each other, all right? So <clears throat> take the 10 flats, okay, there you go. Stack them on top of each other, and then you have a big cube, right? Okay. And that cube represents what? A thousand, right? Yes, a thousand. Now, I want you to meet, look at ten more, nine more other students, uh, students in your class, okay? I want nine students to stand up right now. Okay, you, 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 and you. All stand up, okay? Now, you guys each have a thousand stack, a thousand blocks, sorry, of cubes. You have a thousand, it's called a cube. You have a cube, it represents a thousand, okay? You have one cube in each hand. Now, the ten of you together have how many thousands? Ten thousands, exactly. So this cube represents a thousand, okay? Think about it. One flat is a hundred. One strip is ten, okay? So when you're trying to have pictures in your head, when you're trying to figure these out, if you're trying to work with the powers of ten and decimals, just picture these base ten blocks. But sometimes you won't have these. You won't be able to use them in tests. Just picture this in your head. What does it remember? You physically remember. You're feeling it. Close your eyes and feel the ten strip. Okay, close your eyes now and feel the flat. It's 100. Now close your eyes and feel the cube, okay? Now visualize this in your head. What you could do is in your head, you could visualize it and then you could put it on paper, okay? And then with that, you'll be a better student and you'll learn your powers of 10. My Yale students, you'll be able to put words with symbols and help you better understand the tens, the thousands, the 100, sorry, the tens, 100s, thousands, ones, the decimals, all that good stuff, all right? All right, class, on to our next lesson. And right now we're going to take a little bit of stretch break, okay? I want everybody to stand up and stretch. All right, thank you guys, and we'll continue this lesson in five minutes.